the radio off. Um, now, yeah, what we're going to do, uh, I've actually already started it and thought it might be fun to make a video, is I'm going to try and scratch build a Morse key. And, um, I mean, you can buy them, there's lots of them around. Uh, but this is uh, the remains of a key which I had for you know, a very long time. And I always liked it very much. So we'll take a closer look at it. Yes, here it is, and the first thing that strikes one about it is the shortness, <laughs> the shortness uh, behind the pivot to the backstop, so it's, it's one inch, uh, and then the length of the arm in front of the pivot, uh, which is four inches, so it's a five inch long arm with a very offset pivot. Uh, and I always preferred it, liked it very much. The front stop was originally here. Um, so I moved it to there to see if I would still like it, and I, and I liked it even more. The only thing is the pivot, which I've taken the pin out, because it's very rickety, and the thread is stripped that holds the uh, arm to the pivot, to the shaft. Uh, so, I th so really, it's worn out. So I thought, let's try and make another version of it. Yes, so we've, I've got the bits, and um, but we're going to make it... Uh, more substantial than this was the old key. When it came, uh, when I got it, it was on a wooden base which was warped, and I mounted it on this uh, marble base. Um, but it wasn't terribly satisfactory, and as I said, the pivot's worn out. So we're going to rugged build a, what I call a ruggedized version of it, if if we can. I mean, if I appear in different shirts, that means that something's gone wrong. And in any case, all this might not appear on YouTube in any case, so in that case it doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> uh, yes, I've just, with some labour, cut a piece of this um, mild steel uh, off to form the base of the key. And uh, here in the UK, we, steel is now in metric sizes, but it's six millimetres thick, which is a quarter of an inch, as it were. It's 80 millimetres wide, which is three inches, and I've cut a piece seven inches long because I'm going to make the key one inch longer at the back for, you know, to be on the safe side. Um, and so I'm just uh, finishing the edges. Well, we've got our nice base now, but we didn't just cut it out. We, we did d design it to, to some extent. We've got a drawing here of the uh, you know, top view and we can see the, what the arm has got to be like and uh, these bearing blocks where they're going to go it's upside down where the bearing blocks are going to go we'll probably have to pack them up a bit from the base. Uh, so let's get all the parts together. Here's the base and we've got two bearing blocks here which have got uh, roller or ball bearings in them. And we've also got a piece of uh, silver steel, 6mm diameter silver steel, to act as a, the pivot. Um, this is the pivot that was in the, uh, the key that you saw downstairs. As you can see, it's, it's, it's very thin and it was worn. So we're going to beef up the pivot um, and uh, see how we get on. So all we need to do now is to um, uh, mark it out from the drawing. Uh, I, I know one way of doing it is to do an accurate drawing and punch through the holes, but this drawing wasn't accurate enough for that. Well, to mark out the slab, uh, we uh, have to coat it with engineer's blue and scribe into that, but I haven't got any. Um, so I'm going to try blue acrylic paint, uh, but we'll just degrease it with some isopropyl alcohol, which I'm sure will work, so that the paint will adhere to the surface of the metal. Uh, engineer's blue dries very quickly indeed, but then again acrylic dries pretty quick as well.
No, that's not too bad. Yes, the most crucial holes in the um, in the base plate are for the two bearing blocks, and we've just marked those out. I think they should be okay, so we'll just uh, centre them. Sorry, my hand's in the way. And there's one there. Yes, I'm just uh, trying to spot the uh, the centre punch holes now and start them off with a two and a half mil drill uh, and then go up to the four and a half. Okay, ready for the first first one, a squib of uh, cutting. And it's raining outside, as you can hear it, I dare say. And uh, of course, being in a straight line, the next one should come to a rain. And I think that's going to be all right as well. Of course, if that hole is right, then all we uh, should need to do is to pull the plate back. And if it was marked out correctly, it will be in a straight line like that. So I think that's okay. And as I said, we've got lots and lots of uh, 4BA <laughs> nuts and bolts out of old units. So all we need to do is select four that will conveniently come above the base plate by, say, a quarter of an inch at the most. Yes, I've picked out these screws. They're beautifully made screws. They come up a little bit further than is necessary. Uh, but let's uh, tap the holes on the bearing blocks. Uh, yes, uh, we've ascertained that this, the holes in the bearing blocks um, can be tapped at 4BA because this is a 3mm drill which is the size for tapping to 4BA. It's actually a whisker over so we can go ahead and insert our tap here and uh, start to um, tap up here. I'm going to put a bit of oil, a drop of oil on it. Oops, and off we go. Yes, we've uh, just getting the, uh, we've just used what I think is a, a plug tap. Uh, and I'm sure now we've got enough thread in there to mount that block. So we'll just do the other one. Now that's done. Uh, we can uh, clean some of the, clean the swarf some of it out with a pipe cleaner and we can uh, blow down it as well and that uh, should now give us plenty of thread to get our nice uh, 4BA bolts up from underneath the base okay there it is um, and we've cut a piece of silver steel beveled the end of course and made careful now comes the moment of truth will it go in um, oh. Yes, and then will it go through the other side um, with a little bit of persuasion? Yes, it will. Uh, it's going round. But of course the acid test is can we screw it up and uh, keep the shaft freely rotating? Aha. Well, I'm very pleased to say that yes, it does run sweetly. We have screwed it down. And, uh, oops, there we are. Well, I think that's enough for today. Um, we'll see how we get on. And I wonder if this stuff will end up on YouTube. I don't know. Oh, there's one more thing. Yes, I've got the, um, I'm, I'm, I've rested it on this towel to, to save scraping the table. Because at the moment, of course, we've got the screws underneath holding the bearing blocks. Well, that means that um, they would scrape the table even more. Yes, um, I have quite strong views on rubber feet on the Morse keys. Um, I mean, I've, I've seen keys um, where they're put on as an afterthought, yes, so that we can have you know it on the bench and so on. Um, but often they're not rubber, they're plastic, and they polish, they get polished on the bench. They get hardened, 
they get harder as the years go by and they can make the key slither so you've got to follow it while you're sending um, which is irritating and in the case of a paddle key uh, it can allow a very slight sideways motion um, which actually sort of is added in as an error to the, to the, the, the paddle key so to get rid of all this um, if this is ever finished it won't have any rubber feet um, because I think they are tend to be um, a, you know, a source of trouble. The key wants to be absolutely rigid. What it will be covered in, um, I'm, I'm not sure yet, but something like a sheet of tacky uh, rubber, not too thick, so otherwise you get wobbly, but something that will make it more or less stick to the table and not go drifting about. Uh, and also nothing to be resilient. So uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but uh, cheerio for now. Oh,